This is the third video on impulse and momentum and we're going to work through some basic exam style questions. In the first question, we're told particle A of mass 6 kilograms is moving with speed 5 meters per second. It collides with particle B of mass 4 kilograms, which is moving in the same line and same direction with speed 3 meters per second. A is brought to rest by the impact. In part A, we're asked to find the speed of B after the collision. And in part B, it says after this collision, B goes on with constant speed to collide directly with a particle C of mass 2 kilograms, which is at rest. Given that the speeds of B and C after this collision differ by 3 meters per second, we're asked to find the speed of each. Let's start off now with the first collision, and that's between A and B. So we'll model this up, so we're going to have now a before and an after shot. So writing this on, this now is A and B. So we've got this collision just here. We'll have before and we'll have after. If we place now the uh, particles on our diagram, we've got A, which will be just here, and then we've got B. So B is going to be here. We can show afterwards A and B also, and A will be just here, and then we'll have B just here. So let's put on the mass of each of these particles. We know the mass of A is going to be six kilograms. So we've got A and A, which is six. We've got B, which is gonna be four, and then we can place four just here. We're told now that the speed of A prior to the collision is going to be five, so we can model that up. And we're told now that the speed of B prior to the collision is going to be 3. So we'll model that like so. So we've got 5 metres per second and 3 metres per second. So 5 metres per second and 3 metres per second. We're told after the collision, A is brought to rest. So I can put the arrow on here. I don't need to. I like to do it just so I'm not missing any calculations out. We can place 0 metres per second and then we need to find the speed of B. So what we'll have then is 0 metres per second just here, and we will have V metres per second here. We now need to state that we're going to use the conservation of linear momentum. In the last video, we saw that the total momentum prior to the collision was equal to the total momentum after the collision, and we use that to solve a number of different problems. Momentum is given as mass times by velocity. So let's look at the total momentum prior to the collision. So we've got mass, which is going to be 6, multiplied by velocity, which is going to be 5. We add to that now the mass, which is going to be 4, multiplied by the velocity, which is going to be 3. So this now is the total momentum prior to the collision. If we look afterwards, we've got now a mass of 6, multiplied by a velocity of 0, plus a mass of 4, multiplied by a velocity which we're going to find which we'll call v. So all we need to do is solve this equation. We've got 30 plus 12 will be equal to 0 plus 4v. So solving for v we've got 42, so let's write this here, 42 over 4 is equal to v. So we can say now for b the speed afterwards v will be either 10.5 meters per second, or we could write that as a fraction, as 21 over 2 meters per second. So we've used the conservation of linear momentum to find that value. Let's now move on to part B. So we've got B, and B is moving towards C. C is currently at rest, so we can just model this up. And I'll state that this is going to be before. So we've got now B and C, before, and then we've got now after. So here's before, and then we've got the after shot just here. Be careful in terms of the values that you're putting on. We know here that B has got a mass of 4 kilograms. We know that C has a mass of 2 kilograms. So let's place those two just there. That's C. Here's B. And then we'll place next to it C. So let's do that. So we end up with something that looks like so. So we can place this one. This is going to be B. So we've got 4 kilograms. We've got 4 kilograms. And then we've got 2 kilograms and 2 kilograms. We already know the speed of B after this collision, and we're told that that's constant. So we can put this on just here, and we know initially C is at rest. So I can put 0 meters per second. So we can have this one now. This is going to be 21 over 2. So 21 over 2, or 10.5 meters per second. We got 0 meters per second. 
We're told afterwards that their speeds differ by three meters per second. So I'm gonna place these on. Now C is going to go in this direction, so we'll have that like so, and then we'll place on here now B, which is gonna be here. Sometimes we will have the motion reversed. If we have the motion reversed, just ensure that you're using a negative. In this case, V is going to be the speed of C, and therefore V minus three will be now the speed of B. So all we're looking to do is solve for V. Clearly, if we have this collision here, C is going to go in the direction of BC. So yet again, stating that we're using the conservation of linear momentum, total momentum prior to the collision will be equal to total momentum afterwards. So we've got the mass, which is going to be four, multiplied by the velocity, which is 21 over two. That now is the momentum for B prior to the collision. Plus the mass, which is going to be two, multiplied by the velocity, which is going to be zero. And that is the momentum uh, for C beforehand. So let's now write that, this down. So we've got the mass, which is going to be four, multiplied by the velocity, which is going to be V minus three. And then we add to that now the mass, which is going to be two, multiplied by velocity, which is going to be V. So this is one way that you could do this problem. Certainly not the only way, but it's certainly one approach that you could have. So let's go ahead and work this out. That's going to give me 42. So let's write this in. That's going to give me 42 plus zero will be equal to 4V minus 12 plus 2V. Adding 12 to both sides, we've got 54 will be equal to 6V. Dividing now through by six, we can see that V will be equal to nine. So if we consider this is V right here, we've got now B and C, so let's write this here. We can say that C will be nine meters per second, and we've got B, which is gonna be now nine minus three, which will be six meters per second. So make sure you're answering the question by subbing those in and showing clearly what you're doing. So there we go. That's a fairly standard question looking at the use of the conservation of linear momentum. Let's look at another one. This time we're told a sphere of mass m kilograms collides directly with a sphere of the same radius and of mass m kilograms. So we've got lowercase and then we've got capital. Before the collision, both spheres were moving with speed u meters per second in the same line but in opposite directions. The two spheres coalesce in the collision and move in the direction of the original motion of the sphere with ma of mass m. It says here, given that their speed is u over two, find the ratio m to m. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do is just model this up. So we'll have a before shot and an after shot. So we've got these two particles and one has a mass of little m and one has a mass of big m. So we can place these on like so. So that's going to go there. And that one is going to go just there. We're going to have these two particles coalesce. That means that they're going to essentially form one entire system. And I'm gonna place that like so. So what we have here now is a mass. This is going to be M kilograms. And then this is going to be capital M. So we've got big M and little m. So the combined mass is going to be little m plus big M. Let's go ahead and put some information on. We're told now that these are both moving with a speed of u meters per second, but in opposite directions. So we've got one just here and one here. And we're told afterwards that they're moving now in the direction that the one with a mass of little m was to begin with. So we can put now that this is going to be u meters per second. This one will be u meters per second. And then we're told now that this is going to be u over two meters per second. So we've got now the before shot. So this is the before shot and this is the after shot. So stating now the conservation of linear momentum, which we need to in each of our questions, we can say the total momentum prior to the collision will be the same as the total momentum after the collision. So we've got now the mass, which is going to be little m, multiplied by the velocity. The velocity is positive u meters per second. We add to that now the momentum of the larger uh, mass one, or capital M, I should say. Now, we need to be careful. This is going to be big M, and then we're going to have minus U meters per second, as we're now going in the opposite direction. 
That will be equal to the mass, which is going to be little m plus the big M, multiplied by the velocity, which is going to be u over 2 meters per second. And that's going to be a positive quantity as we're moving in the direction of the little m. Now, we can see that this is going to be independent of u, so we can write now, cancelling u from both sides, we can say that this is going to be little m minus big M will be equal now to one half the quantity, and I'll just write it like so, one half the quantity, little m plus big M. Multiplying both sides by 2, we got 2 of little m minus 2 of big M will be equal to m plus the big M. If I now subtract little m from both sides and add two big 2m to both sides, we've got now on here, let's just uh, swap that over, we're going to have now little m, I'm writing this out, we've got little m, so we can say little m will be equal to three lots of big m. Therefore, the ratio, we're looking at the ratio now of little m to big m, we can say now that little m to big m is going to be a three to one ratio. So if little m is 3 lots of big M, then the ratio of m to big M is 3 to 1. As you can see, with little m and big M, it becomes a bit of a, a nightmare, but quite clearly, when you're doing these questions, you're not going to be saying them out loud, so it will make a bit more sense uh, to you, rather than working between them, as you can see, which I'm struggling with. Um, so that's a nice question. Nice and straightforward, we've looked at the conservation of linear momentum. We discussed the idea of coalescing in the last video. We see this now as one particle, and then we move off like so. We go ahead, use conservation linear momentum, being a bit careful with the negative u, and then now solving a basic equation and rewriting a ratio. Let's look at one more. In this one, it says here, two particles, A and B, of masses three kilograms and five kilograms respectively, are joined together by a light inextensible string. Initially, the string is slack and both particles are at rest on a smooth horizontal table. B is projected away from A with a speed of 4 metres per second. We're asked to find the common speed of A and B and, and the impulsive tension when the string becomes taut. Let's go ahead and model this up. So what we've got then is the following. We've got now this string and the string is currently slack. So we'll have A and B. So we'll place this on. This is going to be the before shot. And we'll place that like there. And then we'll have now an after shot. So let's do the before shot. So we've got this string that's slack. And we can say now that this is going to be before. So write in the before. And then we'll have another one. And this now is going to be afterwards. So when it's afterwards, what we've got then is the string that's taut. You've got two choices here. You can model this up as one system. Or you can ultimately see it now as two different ones. So this is now taut and we're going to be moving now with the same velocity. So beforehand, we've got the one just here, which is going to, let's just label these up. This is going to be A, so let's put A on. We've got A, which is going to be three kilograms. We've got A just here, which is going to be three kilograms. So at this stage, what you could have said now is that the combined, uh, combined mass of this was going to be eight. So let's go ahead and do that, five kilograms and five kilograms. So putting on the initial velocity, we've got now for A, A is going to have now an initial velocity of zero. We're waiting now for this string to go taut before now we kick in with this second scenario. So zero meters per second, and we've got now four meters per second. So what we have then is a common, and we'll place this on like so, we've got this common speed afterwards. And I'm just splitting it up. The reason I'm splitting this up is because I'm going to look at the impulsive tension shortly. Um, although if I was doing it as uh, without the impulsive tension, I'd be inclined just to treat it as one system. But I want to kind of show what's going to go on here. So what we've got then, we will just say that this is going to give us some value. And we can just say that this is going to be V meters per second. This one too is going to be V meters per second, as they have now a common speed. So this is after. So what we'll use is conservation of linear momentum. So conservation of linear momentum, we're going to have total momentum prior to the collision. So we've got mass multiplied by velocity plus now the mass multiplied by the velocity. And that will be equal now to the mass, which is going to be 3, multiplied by the velocity, which is going to be V, plus now the mass, which is going to be 5, multiplied by the velocity, which is going to be V. So we've got 0 
plus now 20, and that will be equal to 8v. So if we now divide both sides by 8, we've got 20 over 8 will be equal to v. So we can say that v will be equal to either 2.5 meters per second, or we could say now that that's going to be 5 over 2 meters per second. Entirely up to us. So that now is v. So these have a common speed here. As stated, if you wanted, and I'll just sketch this up here, to make your life slightly easier, you could have just said, well, I'm going to have a before and an after shot. The before shot would be looking something like so. So we've got our two particles just here. And then we'd have an after shot. Let's put this one on. So here are our two particles. And then afterwards, we'd have now a combined mass just here. So if you wanted to do it this way, uh, it would be a possibility. So we've got now three, we've got five, and then we've got 3 plus 5, which is going to give us the 8. And then you can see calculation becomes slightly easier. The reason I've chosen this one, though, is I want to do now the impulsive tension. So if we consider now the impulsive tension, and we'll look at now this and consider A. The impulse is going to be in this direction. The tension is pulling A here. So from our work before, we can state now, and we'll write this here, that impulse is equal to the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So let's consider this now for particle A. So we can state that the impulse will be equal now to the mass, and that's going to be 3 kilograms, and we're going to have now multiplied by V. We've already established here now that V is going to be the 2.5, so we can put this in, we can say 2.5 or 5 over 2, 2.5 and then we're going to have now minus the initial velocity. The initial velocity was zero so we can say that the impulse was going to be equal to 7.5 newton seconds. So that's looking like so. So that's what we've got. We could of course done this for b. It really doesn't matter. We're just going to have now the same value, same magnitude um, but if we just do this one now what we'll have is the scenario here. So this time if we consider the impulse is going to be in this direction. So this force now is going to be slowing. So what we're going to have is the following. So let's now consider B, and this is one way that you could look at it. So what we've got then is the impulse, and this is for B. We've got now that that will be equal to now five, multiplied now by the final velocity. Now the final velocity, if we consider, this is going to be minus 2.5. And then we need to subtract away the initial velocity. And if we consider the initial velocity, the initial velocity was minus 4, as we're looking at the opposite direction. So we can say that the impulse is going to be 5 lots of minus 2.5 minus minus 4, which is going to give us 1.5. And we can see that I will be equal now to 5 lots of 1.5, which is going to be 7.5 newton seconds. You could have worked that out to be a negative quantity. I've just considered now the impulsive tension in this, uh, either aiding A and halting or retarding B in this way. Lots of different approaches to that, but we can see now that the impulse is going to be the same. So three basic exam style questions looking at impulse, momentum and the conservation of linear momentum.